Welcome back to a UNC Tar Heels football recruiting podcast here on TarHeelIllustrated.com. And if you happen to be watching us on our growing YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, this is THI publisher Andrew Jones is joining me as she almost always does when we talk Carolina football recruiting, our very own director of football recruiting, Miss Dina King. And Dina, last night you and I were at the Coleman Practice Complex at Carolina, UNC, for the Mac Brown Showtime Camp. Always a big deal when it was Fedora's Freak Show or now when it's Mac Brown Showtime Camp. Always a highlight of the camp season. And in my personal opinion, I think it's the biggest recruiting event of the year that we're allowed to be a part of. We're there to see the whole thing with these kids participating and gives us an opportunity to see a lot of the guys that they care about because it's an invite-only camp. So just not anybody can go. And it also gives us a chance to sort of evaluate these kids against other top prospects. They're getting coached by the staff and they're trying to, you know, get the staff to really, really like them even more because a lot of kids nowadays want a North Carolina offer and there are not as many going out as before. But some of the kids that we're going to talk about in this video have offers. Most of them have offers. Couple, one or two maybe don't. And it's in a class of 22 and it's a, going to be a small class. We talk many, many times about how we're looking at probably 14. They might go over one or two for the right kid in the fall. Uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. But there were about 70, 72 kids total that were at the camp. But I would say maybe 15, 16, 17, class of 22 kids. Four of them were committed prospects. They have five commits in the class of 22 uh, Malachi Hamrick was not there. He was participating in a seven-on-seven -seven tournament. Teon Holloway was there, Trayvon Green, Tyshawn Chapman, and Bo Atkinson, although Bo Atkinson did not participate in the camp. So before we talk about the uncommitted kids, just your thoughts quickly on the three committed future Tar Heels who did perform last night. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll start with the one, uh, Bo Atkinson, the most recent UNC commit. He was there. He didn't. He. I don't think he stuck or stuck around for the for the uh, participation stuff. Might have had prior plans, but he was in there taking pictures. I was there early and got the benefit to seeing him. And uh, I mean, impressive kid. I mean, he's he's uh, every, every bit that six six that frame. And uh, I kind of got tickled. He was standing beside a coach Jay Bateman. And that was pretty, pretty funny right there. Cause uh, we know coach Bateman is not the tallest person in the, in the world. So it was, it was impressive to see uh, Bo in, in his uh, uniform, you know, taking let, the pictures. Let me jump in real fast. Plus doesn't Bateman call him Thor? Well, that's what he, that's what he posted on when uh, Atkinson committed. That was the humor for me. Because the thing first thing I thought it, was the Thor tweet. Well, the thing about it is Bo's cut his hair. He used to have, and we I've said it in a lot of the podcasts earlier, he's cut his hair. His old rival's profile had long blonde hair, and I called him Sunshine off the uh, the Titans and stuff. So uh, he, he kind of makes me think of Sunshine, but he's, he's cut them blonde, the blonde hair. So... Uh, but yeah, he's, following, he's following the Jeff Shopper route, getting it cut off yeah. and getting it cut early. Shopper didn't cut his until after he finished with the Saints. He actually told me when Larry had a, had a GA spot for him on the staff, he's like, yeah, you might want to trim that stuff off now. And he did. But the, the former far, blonde Adonis, according to Bruce Young. As far as the other three, uh, Chapman, Holloway, and Green, I mean, uh, you can see why the staff – want them to be Tar Heels and they're, they're full of energy. I mean, Chapman, the speedy guy that, you know, he's probably one of the fastest guys there in Holloway, a DB that can, he basically played both ways in high school. Yeah. You see his athletic ability. And then you have Travion Green, who is just massive. Um, I mean, uh, we saw him before the camp started and it was just, that, that he, he's a big dude. We've got a lot of ISO videos that we're going to roll out. ISOs of different targets. A couple of the committed kids, Travion Green and uh, Tyshawn Chapman, we have ISO videos of them. We had six people 
at the camp from THI. Well, Madam Freeman, <clears throat> national from Rivals, but he's part of our network. And then five straight up from THI. We had two video cameras there capturing a lot of stuff. So we'll have a Green and Chapman video. We may have a Holloway one. I know that Kevin and Jacob are looking to see what they have. They're, they're, they're scouring their uh, their footage to see if they can get some Holloway stuff to put together. He didn't participate in everything. They pulled him out on a few things. But when he was participating, he had a cheering section of Trey Morrison, uh, Geo Biggers, and Tony Grimes. And it was almost yeah. like he was trying to trying to play up to their standards, to their expectations of him when he was out there. Because after each time after he did a rep, especially in the comp competition part, kind of come by and you know, seek their approval, if you will. Well, we, me and you were standing there and we're like, there's Tayon Holloway. He was interacting with Dre yeah. and doing the, doing the, I guess the rude boy handshake. I guess that's what it was. Him and, <laughs> and Dre, you know, in his charismatic, uh, in, you know, way he acts. I mean, Dre was all into this stuff. So um, it, it, it was great to see the interaction of a future Tar Heel with current Tar Heels. Yeah, uh, Tyshawn Chapman a couple of times just blew the doors off guys and got open, showed some of the speed that we've been told he has. I saw him at Virginia Beach last year, didn't see a lot of that because he didn't participate in a lot of stuff. <clears throat> and I was only there for one day. Um, but wow, he showed us some of that speed Saturday night. I know that a, Jacob was pretty wild by it, Kevin was. And, and it was your, I guess, your first time seeing him in person. So mm -hmm. um, you were kind of impressed. A couple of times, literally, the defender's jock was dangling from the, yeah, from the ceiling I, I of, he, of the indoor facility. He, he, you know, kids, he, he showed why he's, you know, highly ranked and UNC wants him. I mean, in, in his season, his pace season, he ran the ball and he caught the ball out of the, you know, out of the slot. So, he, he can be used all over in the offensive scheme. Uh, I think um, he, he a good comparison to him would be maybe a Daz Newsome because yeah. Daz could run reverses. He could uh, run slots. He could go deep. I mean, he should catch, catch the short passes. I think uh, Tyshawn will be uh, really, really good in uh, this offense. You and I have been around – big time athletes for a long time. I have at the professional level, a major college and, and at camps like this, and there's not a whole lot that wows us as far as seeing these amazing uh, athletes and, and when they're in front of us. But when I first saw Travion Green mm -hmm. Saturday evening, he was actually sitting down putting on his cleats. And I was like, wow, that's a pretty big kid. And then he stood up and I was like, wow, that's a really big kid. And then I watched him do some drills. I said, wow, how is he a three-star? And then I saw him do some more stuff. I said, wow, how is he a three-star? And I'm not being critical of the rivals ranking system. I'm just sort of what I'm doing is I'm building up how impressive he appeared to me last night in my first chance to actually see him in person. There's a lot to like, and there's a heck of a frame there. I'm sure they'll rework some of that body when he gets to Chapel Hill, but I see why the staff really, really wanted him and went ahead and accepted his commitment back in January. Well, you can never, the old basketball slows and you can't never teach size, height and size, you know, and uh, UNC, Coach Searles, you know, he's he's going to take it as a challenge and, and mold him into a very good offensive lineman. I mean, he's got, he's got a lot of in the stables there, so Travion will, will be able to uh, learn and train and get his body right with Coach Hess. We've seen what kind of wonders he's done. I mean, uh, I picked Adam Friedman. He, he wanted he hadn't seen uh, Keyshawn Silver, and he hadn't seen him since, oh, about two years. And he couldn't believe Keyshawn Silver now versus a couple of years ago the transformation and everything. So Coach Hess, he's one of the underrated uh, guys on that staff that gets is getting this Tar Heel program coincide with their rise because you got to have a good strength and conditioning uh, program there with uh, A.J. Blue being involved and Heck 
being involved and, and all, all those guys. A little bit of a sidebar here, not a lineman, but I saw Jabrius Conley Saturday night. I don't know if you had, if you saw him, but good grief. He's going to play safety. Folks, Carolina fans, you're watching. Jaquarius Conley looks huge. It looks like he has lived uh, with Brian Hess and, that, and, and John Heck and those guys, A.J. Blue, because he looks like a different human being than this time a year ago. Very, very impressive. So they will get these kids into shape. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of kids very quickly who were on official visits. They were at the camp but did not participate. There were, there were, there were a few officials this weekend but two of the kids stuck around uh, to at least watch the camp and take place. One of them, Fisher Anderson, whom you have spoken to multiple times. In fact, uh, right a couple of days after Carolina lost the NCAA tournament, you had a real full interview with him. I think he had made a visit to Chapel Hill on his own during the pandemic and wasn't able to see a whole lot, but that's how interested he was in Carolina. So last night, I keep saying last night, we're recording this Sunday, running it Monday morning. I'm walking behind the offensive lineman, and there's a guy talking to uh, Phil Longo. And from behind, I thought, hey, that, that's Charlie Heck. <laughs> you know, go, go, go just do like a little sister with Charlie Heck or something like that. And, and it was Fisher Anderson. So think about it. Charlie Heck's in the NFL. He was a really good tackle, 6'7 tackle, 6'8 tackle for Carolina. I don't know how tall Fisher Anderson is, but he's you, I don't know what the what he, what he measured this weekend, I should say, because a lot of the rivals' numbers are still really, really old because they're just now finally having mm-hmm. an opportunity to be around these kids. But, you know, he's a big kid, Dina. He already looks filled out and like he can handle a lot more. Yeah, he he was mingling around at the end of the practice, and that's when we, we kind of noticed. I was like, man, that, that's, a, that's a huge guy there. And we finally, you know, we had to, to take out our – phones and look up pictures and, and stuff but yeah Fisher Anderson was there uh he's got a final four of Stanford UNC Virginia and um the other one kind of slips my mind but all of them are very highly um academic institutions and um uh, I believe he's going to Stanford this week the final week of basically the the uh the open, you know, where the kids can go on visits. So, uh, like him, he likes Carolina. I think his sister co- goes to UNC. He, he actually, when he came for the quarantine, he, I think he watched some of the lacrosse teams. And you know how the, the lacrosse did this year for, for both men's and women's. So, um, he, he's a guy that I kind of like Travion. You know, he, he's a uh, – He won't be rushed into action. Uh, He's from out in the Nashville area. So he he knows Eli Sutton real good. So um, who knows? I mean, uh, uh, Fisher Anderson uh, has a – he likes UNC a lot. He got to meet Coach Searles. He got the the whole whatever UNC does, the royal treatment there in Chapel Hill. Yeah, those kids got a lot. He, by the way, Fisher Anderson is a four-star offensive lineman. Another four-star kid, defensive end Bryson Jennings, was on his official visit. He was there, didn't participate. Um, I didn't really see him much, so you kind of roll with this one because you saw him more than I did, and <laughs> you know a lot about this young man. Well, one one major thing about the the pandemic and everything is we've not we've not seen these kids in person. Yeah. And a lot of times, the only time we've seen the kids is on their profiles. If you, if I looked at Bryson Jennings' rivals profile, and then I saw him in down there, it was like night and day. That kid, he he looks nothing like his rivals profile. He looks like a totally different kid. Just you know, great physique, just muscles. Um, you know, he was hanging around the. Uh, Coach De- 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 DeWitt, because he's uh, going to be one of those hybrid outside linebacker, defensive end type kids. Um, you know, he was on his official. Uh, he has really close ties to Virginia Tech because that's where his dad played, coached. So, I mean, I honestly think that this this is going to be between UNC and Virginia Tech. And it, it basically – 
what what Bryson decides. I mean, does he want to follow in his his dad's footsteps and be an Okie, or uh, move and come south and join the other Virginians on the, on the team? Because it looks like it's a uh, a common theme of the Virginia kids trying to recruit the other Virginia kids to come to UNC. And Commonwealth Carolina is starting to take form. Four other kids from the class 22 we're going to talk about who are at the Showtime camp on Saturday night. Two with off, a couple with offers, a couple without offers. Uh, Connor Harrell, really the only quarterback kind of being targeted right now, I guess. Uh, Unless there's something brewing that I don't know about. You're, you're more in tune with that stuff than I am, Dana. But Connor Harrell is definitely someone that we paid attention to Saturday night. Uh, someone that you have been keeping eye on for about six weeks now. We originally didn't think that quarter, a quarterback would be in this class because of its size. But when you think about the reality of that position, the reality of the portal, Sam's going to move on. Could be a topic in the draft. And then there's – probably going to be some attrition someone will hit the portal among the other three quarterbacks that means they got to bring in another kid they got to have insurance they got to have a scholarship caliber kid in there uh, to join that room they would like to have four kids on scholarship if possible but certainly three you can keep your starter healthy you can survive with that so we saw some interesting stuff from connor harrell on saturday i'll let you kind of take it from there yeah he's He's not that big. He, I mean, he's a dual threat. I mean, he's not as big as Jacoby, but Jacoby's been in a, in a college weight room for two years now. So uh, he's he was pretty, he looked similar to Jacoby when we saw him at Showtime yeah. two years ago. There were a lot of similarities with the two of them. Go ahead. Now he's he's from uh, Alabama, and he's a three star. And you know he 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 liked. Arizona State, Northwestern, UNC, and Michigan. Uh, I think Arizona State might not be as high now with some situations out there, but he went to Northwestern like that and then, you know, was in U at North Carolina for the first time this on Saturday and was heading up to Michigan uh, th following being in Chapel Hill to, to, to check out Ann Arbor. I mean, uh, you know, me, me and you and Jacob and Kevin and Jared, we, we, we all stood around thinking that something might happen because him and his family, they stayed, I believe they were the last player to leave the facility and we were just hanging out because you never know what happens at, we've seen it happen at the freak show and the showcase and stuff. Sometimes kids commit we, we was on commitment watch, for, but nothing nothing happened. Like I said, he's, he's, he went up, he's going up to Michigan. But it's just fun seeing a family just gather around Mac and Miss Brown, Miss Sally was there and just intermingling with, with the coaches and just seeing that family theme that, that coach always talks about. And when we speak to the players, they always talk about the family. So it was just nice seeing them have their moment, taking their pictures with Coach Brown and, and stuff. So, uh, the, and and as him as a player, rifle arm, you know, he was he was hitting the the receivers. I I liked what I saw out of him. He made all the throws, and he could throw a bullet too. You know, that was uh, that was like Mitch Trubisky speed with some of those throws. And by the way, Phil Longo showing off those photog skills there with that group. He was also, it was Harold, his, looked like his parents, maybe a brother and or sister, Mac, Miss Sally, and Phil Longo. It's a big crew there, and they were chatting for a while, uh, which we thought was very interesting. And, of course, that's why we stick around to the very end, because we've seen it happen before. Dontavious Nash committed two years ago at the end of Showtime as well. It That's does seem like forever. Kaysen Henry is a three-star offensive lineman. He was also there. Uh, I saw a little bit of him. And, of course, you know, when you're a three-star offensive lineman at that age, you know, these, kid, these kids are a long ways away from having their body and everything kind of match up and be in sync. And with him, you just kind of look at him and say, yeah, that guy can put on a lot. And a lot of what he has now is going to be, you know, massaged into something else and, and he'll look like a different human being in three years, wherever he goes. Uh, but certainly there's a reason that there's interest in him. And uh, just by watching him, he's 
those kind of kids simply stand out, you know. He's he's from Georgia, from uh, um, and I think uh, Carolina's recruiting his teammate Marcus Allen. Um, he 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 he's a big. His family's big at Georgia. They have a lot of ties to Georgia. Now, I have an offer from Georgia, but Carolina is right there in his top list because um, this was his first chance of being really around the, the coaches and seeing, you know, their coaching style. And, and he actually kind of visit, took a visit unofficial. He, he hasn't um, took an official visit to UNC, but it was an unofficial so uh, it was nice seeing him. I mean, I've talked to him, and he's been very positive about UNC. He likes what they're doing, Coach Brown. What what they're what they're trying to build at UNC. So uh, you know, he's a 22 offensive lineman, and uh, you know, we we there's a lot, possibly three guys that you know we don't know how many they're going to take with you know with Henry and then you have Fisher Anderson. And of course you have five-star Zach Rice, who's has UNC in his top five. So um, several possibilities are for, for offensive line. And uh, Henry could possibly be one of those. Makai Hughes. Uh, I did not know who he was until Saturday night. Uh, I was told to go, Adam said, Hey, then go watch the guy in the green shorts over there at the running backs. So I went over there and, I'm checking him out, and, and the first thing I thought was, oh, this kid's impressive. He runs hard, runs low. He's got great body balance. He's built. He, he kind of looks like that combination football player sprinter. Kind of got that look to him. Uh, so when they, they stopped the drill and a little water break, I kind of I asked him. I went over to him and I said, excuse me. I said, can you tell me what your name is? And his trainer, his personal trainer, was right behind me, and he blurted out, Makai Hughes. So I went over and talked to his trainer, Coach L., uh, he's from Birmingham, Alabama. He's a three-star running back. He's got offers from Florida State, Auburn, Houston, um, Kansas, and a couple other uh, Power Fives. He was at Virginia Tech on Friday. And he's a young man that, that is hoping to get an offer from a program like a Carolina. And he wants to compete. He's trying to get better. He's trying to generate a little bit more buzz. But there is a connection here with Larry Porter, the running back coach at Carolina, because Coach L, who is a trainer, has a business in uh, Birmingham. In fact, he's so well respected. He's on the small business uh, council in the city of Birmingham. His business is doing that well. Um, he actually trained Larry Porter's son, Omari, who's now a freshman at Stanford. So there's a clear connection there. And, you know, I remember seeing Michael Carter when he committed at the Freak Show. And this young man reminds me a little bit, a little bigger than Michael was, but he's got a lot of the other attributes. And Michael was a three-star kid. A lot of people kind of undervalued him in the recruiting process. And look what happened. I'm not saying this kid's going to turn out to be that way, but you never know. And to me, it was exciting to, to meet Coach L and to, his name is Leonard Stevens, and also get a chance to see a kid I didn't know anything about because there's so many players out there, Dina, as you well know. And there were quite a few kids from the state of Alabama that were at Showtime. So this is a young man that I think people need to kind of keep their eye on. You know, Carolina is going after George Petaway. They're going after Marion Hampton. Maybe they don't get both. Maybe they get one. They say, you know what? There's a connection here. This kid's got a great attitude. He's a really good student. He's got an offer from Yale. So he's a really good student, the kind of kid that Matt, Mac wants in his program. So Carolina fans need to keep an eye on this kid. Yeah, and you – you uh, left out Damari Austin. So yeah. Carolina's got three, four stars they're in really good shape with. And you you never know how kids are. You know, if one decides to commit, one of those three decides to commit, maybe the other two is kind of like, hmm. They scout. Go elsewhere. So they, they, they go part ways. And then you have a kid that, like Hughes, that was impressive and – wouldn't mind just being on a power five roster, you know, with a chance to be able to show what he can do. So you never know. Recruiting is fluid, as you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, KB on Freshwater is a kid from Elizabeth City in-state, three-star. We haven't really talked much about him. Didn't he have a brother a couple of years ago that was a pretty yeah. highly regarded prospect? Tra was it Travion Freshwater? Yeah, I think, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, East Carolina, uh, I believe. here's a young man that um, looked pretty impressive. But let's remember, this is going to be a small class. Everybody's got small classes uh, this year around the country. Carolina is going to be especially small. So a kid that when we watch him, we say, oh, yeah, that, he kind of would fit in in a normal 25 man class. You have to look at it a little bit differently with a 14, 15, 16 man class. But Freshwater is certainly somebody that in years past would make a lot of sense being pursued by Carolina. Yeah, he, he plays at Northeastern up in Elizabeth City, and they've they've had a really good football program, put out a lot of a lot of good uh, players. I believe his brother might have been uh, at the one of the freak shows a few years ago with a. a Another kid, I, I mean, his name slips me uh, right now, but, you know, Northeastern always putting out good quality football players. And it's just a kid trying to, to, to get better, maybe possibly get an offer. You never know. Uh, impress, the, impress the coaches. And uh, it never hurts to come and try. So, um, you know, he, he's, he's a great he, – he walked by me. I mean, he's a he's – a, He's got a, a great frame and uh, and and everything, and so I, I expect Northeastern to to have another great year. They played in the state, uh, I believe they played in the state finals. They're trying to knock the door down and win a state championship, but no, they and they can't get by Reedsville. So well, having talent like him will kind of help you, yeah, you know, bust through that ceiling. Most of the kids that we focused on Saturday night were class of 23, 2023 kids. And as we've been telling everybody for a couple of months, at some point this summer, we were going to really steer the nose hard in our coverage on 23 kids because we think that has a chance of being a full class next year. So the recruitment of the 23s is really going strong right now. We're going to do two more podcasts about what we saw Saturday night. The next two are going to be about class of 23 kids. So not a lot with 22, but certainly some interesting prospects and some interesting possibilities. And it was great to see. It was great to, to have a chance to be exposed to some of these kids because everybody's been so fixated on the usual suspects, if you will. But there are other guys out there and some of those guys could end up in Chapel Hill. Yeah, we, we've said the, the net has been cast very shallow and because the, you know the staff are, has dialed in on their main targets and they're they're putting a lot of their eggs in the same in the basket you know so there's not a lot of kids not a lot of 22 kids that have that offer now if some of these kids start um, making decisions you can see the net widen uh, uh, Xavier Simmons a linebacker from uh, Greensboro, Northwest Guilford, who we talked about uh, when we talked about linebackers, he decided to commit to Virginia Tech. So, I mean, you know, what what does that say about the linebackers? Do does, uh, does the staff feel real good about Sebastian Cheeks and Deuce, Deuce Caldwell? So, we don't know. We're, we're, we're just trying to stay above water and keep up with all this the, I called it the zoo when it when June first opened up. It's been a crazy, crazy month. And so everybody will know Miss King is grinding to get interviews. And if you want to read interviews with a lot of these kids, you have to be a member of our community at Tar Hill Illustrated. We have a great special going on right now. So if you sign up right now, it's all free. Everything we do is free up until August 10th. That includes the beginning of fall camp, which I believe starts around August or somewhere around there. It's not a locked in date, but somewhere around that time. There's going to be a lot of basketball stuff too. We're hitting the basketball recruiting hard and all of our other coverage, all of our premium stuff. You get it for free until August 10th. Interviews with these kids and all the 23s we're going to talk about here over the next couple of days as well. She's Dina. I'm AJ. Thanks for stopping by.